Okay. We are on the air, apparently. So anyone can see our inner workings, and it's very frightening. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> What's up, everybody? My name's Matt Curione, uh, and I'm here to introduce you to the very intro... Uh, fuck. Uh, let's start that over. <laughs> God damn. All right. I haven't done this in a while. Shit. All right. What's up, everybody? My name's Matt. I am... Okay, start it over. <laughs> okay, three, two, one. Howdy, everybody. Matt Curione here with uh, Pixels and Reels, uh, the new podcast that's going to bring you all the cool little things that are happening in movies, mostly inside our minds. Uh, if you don't know what Pixels and Reels is, it's a uh, Facebook group that I founded about a year ago uh, as a way to just get away from all the other groups I was a part of, uh, there was a lot of meltdowns that went on, and I figured, let's just start a movie group where we can just talk about what we love, which is movies and how they affect us and basically how awesome Michael Mann is. At least that's been re <laughs> recent talk. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's a little Facebook group. Uh, we've been blowing up recently. We're well over 100 members uh, in, in under eight months, which I think is pretty nifty. Uh, and I have here today with me uh, three uh, fellow members of Pixels and Reels. I have, uh, let's just uh, go around the room. Everyone uh, introduce yourselves. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> James? Yeah, okay. Stressful. <laughs> um, I'm James Barrett. Um, I'm only 18, so I'm probably the youngest one here. I'm like a baby. You're um, such a child. <laughs> yeah, I'm so innocent. <laughs> uh, I don't know what kind of things do I need to say. Basically, uh, what do you like? Uh, what's, let's just go around and just talk about uh, what do you do? What do I do? Yes. Uh, well, I'm, uh, I'm in college. Okay. And uh, mostly, and in part time, I work with my dad, and I mostly mm -hmm. just uh, move boxes, I move like uh, TVs and boxes of electronic equipment. And you watch a lot of movies and you review them, don't I you? Do. I do, I do all those too. Who do you who do you write for, James? <laughs> I write for Pulp Three Six Five. <laughs> Damn right you do. So do I. I forgot to mention that I'm also the movies editor for uh, Pulp Three Six Five. It's uh, an interesting little website. Uh, we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> uh, John, who are you? Uh, I am John Parrish, uh, 25. Uh, I am actually a middle school English teacher. Oh. Um. Yeah. And uh, what else is there to say? I have written before. I've done reviews for a site called House of House of Geekery dot com. So if okay, everyone go check those out. Um, and yeah, I love movies. That's basically my that and video games are my spare time hobbies. When I have spare time, because I'm a teacher after all. Yeah. So <laughs> same here. My uh, I wait tables for a living. So it's any spare time I get. There's maybe like. 10% video games, the rest is all movies. Yeah. It's an interesting life. <laughs> Matt, how about you? Matt? Hello? It looks like he fell asleep. Oh no, we lost Matt. Hello? Oh dear. I think he is gone. Man down. Or, or is he frozen? <laughs> Oh, he's yeah, gone! He, he just dropped. All right. Uh, we're going to do... I'll do audio editing later. So, all right. Intros are doing pretty decent. <laughs> I'm sending him a message right now. Where are you at? <laughs> yeah, Matt's like an actual podcaster. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. I've actually done a podcast before. It was very short lived, but uh, mm -hmm. there's a guy in our in the group, Jason Cadoni. Cadoni. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like me and him did one because I've actually known him for a few years. We did one. Oh, that's that cool. Was very short lived. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember how I met him. I think I met him through uh, MFC on JoeBlow.com. That's how I met him. Oh shit! His power went out. No. Oh. Matt's power went out. Oh no!
Do we power on or? Uh, he's gonna try it from the phone. But uh, we're just gonna keep uh, doing the editing. Well, I'll do some editing later. I, I'm decent at that. So before we actually get back into the show, uh, let's do a little preview of what we've uh, we're gonna be talking about. What uh, what movies are you gonna guys talk about? Basically, just like a movie or two that you've watched this week that you want to talk about. Um. Oh man. I'm trying to think of what I watched. I've been busy. School started. Watched High Fidelity with John Cusack. Oh, how is it? I've never seen it. <laughs> um, I like it a lot. I really like John Cusack. I'm. I'm a. Me too. I do too. Yeah, yeah I'm a sucker for his a uh, stereotypical kind of character. <laughs> uh, uh, have you Have you seen Grand Piano? No. Oh, it's so no, not a stereotypical John, uh, John Cusack character. Well, I mean, he's been getting out of that a lot recently, but it's not to a very good result. <laughs> the <Yeah>. Raven. <laughs> oh shit! That was a movie that that was a movie that happened, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think. I oh think. God! Thanks for reminding me. He's in some movie that came out pretty recently that I I don't know, like if I think it was published um, on VOD, but it's uh, with Nicolas yeah, Cage. Yeah, I remember it was a video on demand one. Yeah. Yeah. Was it him and Nicolas Cage, Frozen Ground? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I saw that on that. I saw that on Netflix. I haven't gotten the strength to watch it yet, but Oh, I'm I'm gonna eventually. It's like five bucks at Walmart and I'm excited. Oh damn. <laughs> Um, but no, I mean, as for me, I've I've only seen three movies this week: A Most Violent Year, American mm-hmm. Sniper, and uh, Foxcatcher. And so I'm probably <laughs> well, talking about just... Foxcatcher. Oh, I'm talking about Foxcatchers. Yeah. I don't know. To to me, the one I would have the most to say about would be American Sniper, but I haven't seen that yet. Oh uh, no, man! You got to lay the praise all over Most Violent Year. <laughs> <laughs> I may do that too. I may do it's that. fucking awesome. It is. It is. It really is. Uh, where's the wind coming from? I don't know. Do you guys hear, hear that? Wind. It might just yeah, be. I, hear it. Uh, well, then I don't hear it. It might be me then. I hope it's not me. <laughs> but yeah, man, most violent year. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that movie was. It was great. That's a goddamn movie. <laughs> I just, I'll probably get to it before American Sniper. Oscar Isaac in that movie just I I don't know what it was. It was just well, I mean I do know what it was. It was good acting, but yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that, that's what that was. What it was that he did. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing uh, with uh, with him, a lot of people are saying it. And I kind of agree. Uh, he gives the best Al Pacino performance of the oh, past yeah. 30 years. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh, it's all over it. Oh, my God. And Jessica Chastain, oh, she's, she's scary. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to mess with that lady. <laughs> the, uh, bir- the birthday cake scene. Like, yes. even, though, even though it was really, really brief, like it's mm-hmm. that, was, that was good. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah. Let me let me see what he's doing. Because if anything, we could just do this uh, real quick just without him. Yeah. Just give me a second. Oh, hey, he's back. Hey, fellas. So what happened? Uh, uh, one of the circuit breakers blew out right as you started the show. Oh, so shit. I had, I had, so I had to run outside to the basement and trip the circuit breaker in the rain <laughs> and go back in. So sorry about that. We uh, uh, we just saw you were just, like, leaning there. We're like, did he fall asleep? What happened? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, good. Awesome. You're alive. This pleases me. <laughs> so, um... All right. Uh, sure. Let's just... <laughs> let's just start... Do the, in, 
<laughs> yeah, do the Let's intro just start again. The, we'll just start from the top. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Go. All right. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, well, you're alive. You're a little wet, but yeah. it's cool. Yeah. No, no worries. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> What's that problem? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we Jeez, probably should Christ. start again. It's going to take forever. Oh, no, we got this. We got this. We got them. I have faith in this little team we have. <laughs> Somewhat. Yeah. All right. Howdy, everybody. Welcome to Pixels and Reels, the podcast. Uh, it's nothing like anything you've ever heard before and also everything like you've ever heard before. Uh, if you don't know what Pixels and Reels is, which you probably don't, it's a uh, movie group that I founded about a year ago on Facebook. Uh, we have a lot of like minds uh, and a lot of dissenters every once in a while. There's always some fun little arguments. Uh, we like to have fun. It's a fun place for people who like fun. And movies, of course. That's our main focus. Uh, there's video games here and there, but the podcast is basically going to revolve around movies and uh, what we think about them and all that good stuff. Uh, my name is Matt Curione. I am a, the movies editor for Pulp365.com. Uh, it's a website that was founded last year. I've, actually, I've had a bunch of reviews published for them, a couple editorial pieces, one that I uh, collaborated with... Uh, with one of our guests today, uh, James, and what we're going to do right now is just go around uh, the room, quote unquote, and uh, just introduce ourselves. Uh, let's start off with uh, James Barrett. Hello, I'm James Barrett, as we already said, and uh, I'm a staff writer on Pulp 365. I'm the uh, the baby of the group at 18, and uh, mostly of my time spent with school and. Uh, watching movies in between classes to kill time, and uh, I'll work part-time with my dad, moving boxes. It's a good time. It's always a good time, moving boxes. <laughs> <laughs> and watching movies, which is even better. Mm -hmm. All right, next up, we have John. Hi, I'm uh, John Parrish. I, um, I have written reviews and editorials and things about movies before. Uh, Houseofgeekery.com, if you ever are interested. Uh... But most of my time is spent teaching English. I'm an English teacher. Um, but whenever I don't do that, in the very little spare time I otherwise have, I do watch movies quite a bit. Prerequisite. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And last but not least, we have... Uh, Matt Bradley Shurgi. I'm the host of the uh, Sequel Cast uh, podcast, where you talk about film and video games and franchises. And then I also uh, write a column for Battleship Retention on uh, movie sequels. One of and, the best websites. <laughs> uh, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's a good site. And I also, as a day job, I do um, tech support and beta testing for uh, the medical industry. All right. So, all right. So we're all pretty much jacks of all trades. Yep. <laughs> yeah. bunch of bunch of jacks just walking around. <laughs> bunch of jackass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good trade off. Um, okay. <laughs> Next up, uh, we're gonna do a. This is just basically introducing uh, the concept of the show. Um, the weekly thing we're gonna be doing is just talking about what we've been watching in the past week. Uh, I mean, I so far in twenty. 15. Oh, wow, it's 2015. How about that? It is a year called 2015. <laughs> um, I every have day. watched every, every day this year it's been 2015. Um, I've watched uh, at least around 15 movies so far this year. Um, it's basically all I do. Uh, what uh, I've seen this year that really shot out to me, I was able to catch uh, Foxcatcher. That was... That, I didn't mean to do that. Uh, but yeah, uh, Foxcatcher, it's... Uh, I don't know if anyone's uh, that's listening potentially has uh, heard of it. It's a uh, well, you probably have. It's the true <laughs> story of uh, the Schultz brothers who were uh, basically taken under John Dupont's wing uh, back in the late '80s, mid '90s, and he wanted to train them to win another gold medal. And long story short, he's batshit crazy, uh, <laughs> played played by Steve Carell under uh, a whole bunch of makeup. Uh, he looks nothing like himself, but he also gives one of the, the best performances I've seen. Uh, and I also find it strange that he's 
been touted as a lead actor when I think it's kind of obvious that he's a supporting actor. Uh, has anyone else here seen uh, The Catching Foxes? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I think we all have them. Have I have not. Met? No. Oh, okay. No. Oh. All right. I'm, I'm sure I, know, I, I know Steve... <laughs> I know Steve Carell has a big fake nose in it, and it was a bit of a surprise he got nominated for Best uh, Actor mm. for, for the Oscars, because um, I don't think he was nominated for the Golden Globes, right? Uh, he, was. he was. He, he was. was. Oh, he was? Yeah, okay. He, yeah. Mm. I just, I just, I really think it's interesting that he's up for lead when it's a supporting character. So Channing guess... Tatum's more the lead? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Channing Tatum's in 95% of the movie, like oh, every, yeah. almost okay. every scene. And, uh, I mean, I've been saying this for a while. I've been touting this guy in, like, even, like, these little roles he does. Like, every once in a while, he was in uh, Side Effects, uh, Soderbergh's Side Effects for a little bit. And he, right here in Foxcatcher, he's giving, like, the performance of his career so far. Oh, uh, yeah. I've never seen him show this level of skill. And I guess it's a, a tribute to him, but it's also to the director, Bennett Miller. Uh, he seems to get uh, fantastic performances out of whoever he works with. I mean, he did uh, the film Capote, which I still think is one of Philip Seymour Hoffman's best best roles I've ever seen him do. Uh, but yeah, Foxcatcher, uh, it's violently depressing. And that's why I loved it so damn much. Uh, <laughs> uh, Matt, what, what have uh, you watched recently? Uh, I've been watching uh, some documentaries on on Netflix, kind of catching up on those. Uh, one is a new one they just added called To Be Takei, about George Takei, the actor that played uh, Captain Sulu on Star Trek. Oh, I've seen that. It's in uh, it's in my queue right now. <laughs> yeah. it's Anyone else seen it? No, not yet. I'm, I'm, no. <laughs> no. And so it, it's really, uh, r- really fluffy. It doesn't really go in-depth. And I had already read George Takei's autobiography, but uh, all the stuff about him being in a uh, Japanese internment camp in the U.S. is a uh, pretty interesting material. I've um, heard about that, yeah. And it I also know, goes... Yeah, yep, and he also goes with the uh, gay marriage rights, uh, mm. the stuff he's done for that, you know. Um, so it, it's good, it's not great. I mean, I don't think it... It's difficult for me to tell someone to see a documentary in a theater, really, but yeah. it, it feels more like something for yeah. TV than, than anything real special. It's not... It's shot okay... Um, it, it, I give it a C, I guess, if we're using a A to F grading scale. Okay. But if you like Star Trek, you you probably like it. I like Star Trek well enough, but I do like uh, George Takei quite a bit. So. Yeah, you get a lot of Howard Stern in the documentary as well. Yes, yes. Oh. <laughs> that that's always a good thing. I would I would think. <laughs> yep. Uh, John, what have you seen recently? Um couple things, uh, but I'll go with The Most Violent Year. Yes! <laughs> yes! Um, th- there were, and I, I think we're getting to it like later, but there are several things that the Oscars didn't recognize that annoyed me, and The Most Violent Year was probably at the forefront of that. Oh, totally um, stubbed. Like, <laughs> didn't it, it got nothing, right? Not a thing. No. Ugh. Um... It's uh, it's quite, it's qu- <laughs> it's quite good. And the thing about it is, I um, I was looking forward to it anyway because I like J.C. Chandor as a writer and director. I first mm-hmm. saw his first movie, Margin Call, when it came out a couple years ago, and that's like one of the best, like stage plays to screen that you could ever see. Like it's very um, Twelve Angry Men like. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, 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 that's just it's just. Like it, that could easily transition to a stage play, and so his writing just f- out of the gate with his first film was so good. And it's from what I understand, all his loss had like what an eight-page script. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, that, uh, an eight-page screenplay. Yes. <laughs> and so it's like he took what his best tool and toolbox was from the first film and kind of threw it out the window in the second one. But he <laughs> he brings it back in this one because the script is just so good. He the performance is all around. But and Chastain's getting the most praise, but to me, Oscar Isaac was the best performance in this film. Oh, he um, is fantastic. He is just so. I love mag- Oscar Isaac. Yeah, he's so magnetic I'm- in the film. There's such a. They're, like you cannot help from the opening scene just to be totally in his corner throughout the entire film because his mm-hmm. character, his character isn't necessarily like. 
a pure 100% good guy, but he's trying to be, and you just invest he's trying his hardest. <laughs> Yeah, like, I mean, there's so many moments where he talks about how he wants to be, you know, the, the cliche in mob movies, the, you know, he wants to be legit, and he wants to, you know, do yeah. the right thing. But where from some actors, it would probably come off as not convincing with him. It, you, you just buy it. But... Yeah, he's really damn good in that movie. Yeah, and, uh, I mean, just... and. There were moments where I would look at him too. I mean, just the way that he was, and it wasn't just like makeup or hair they did with him, but also the way he carried himself. Where I'm like, yeah, that's the guy I saw inside Lewin Davis. You know, that's that, that's him. And then there would be other moments where I'm like, I don't recognize this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but oh, but and I mean, uh, Al Albert Brooks for days and days, forever and always, <laughs> in all the in all the movies, please. <laughs> Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Like, this film has a great supporting cast too. Like, you know, Albert Brooks, uh, David. I can never say his last name. David. Uh, can never oh, yellow. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, he's I mean, him. He's, he's not in it a lot, but when he's in it, you know, he, it, it's good. Um, but just technically, the movie looks great. It was shot by uh, Bradford Young. Yes. Who, uh, he also he did, did Selma, uh, Selma. Yeah. Selma, and also um, one of the best from. 2013, uh, Ain't Them Body Saints, which if you haven't seen, you need to. Oh, I've heard about that. It's, so, it's such a good movie, and it's so beautifully <laughs> shot. It's like the best well, Terrence Malick movie Terrence Malick never did. Oh, um, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we all know that Malick does the gods, uh, does the Lord's work. So uh. Yeah, but no, the most violent year, it was snubbed in several different ways, but it, don't snub it yourself. Go see it. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, it is uh, a beautiful, beautiful dark film. Yeah. And with a good amount of violence. <laughs> so it's it's not uh it's not false advertising on their part. <laughs> no. No. All right, uh the next segment uh that we're going to be doing is uh the post of the week. Uh, it's uh what everyone's been talking about basically in uh Pixels. And uh we basically just touched upon it and it's the Oscars. Uh they made some let's put it this way, interesting choices this year. Um, I mean, yeah, Theory of Whatever is nominated, so that's a thing that happened. Uh, it's an odd thing when they have the room for ten nominees and they don't fulfill that. Do you get yeah. what I'm... What I'm yeah, it's yeah. Just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this year they have eight nominees, uh... Talking, going back to Foxcatcher, it's up for director, but we don't have room for it in our Best Picture nominees, even though we have room for it. Which Yeah, that, it's weird. It's very weird, and I know uh, James has a little something to say about a certain animated film. Oh. oh I, I got to the, uh, you know, the... I finally can't the word, but, you know, when they're showing on TV, you know, revealing the nominees, I got to the late, and so I missed Best Animated Feature. And really the only animated movie of the year, for me, of course, that I really loved was the Lego movie. And so I assumed it was nominated, so I didn't bother to look it up. Yeah, everyone and just then, assumes, because it's so well, good. Because it's amazing. I, I think that if they should have put it for Best Picture, I mean, it was one of my favorite movies of the year. And I saw on like Twitter or something that it wasn't nominated, and I was pissed. Like I don't, I just don't understand it. It doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, I haven't seen, I didn't see Big Hero Six or uh, any of the Japanese movies, but I saw the Box Trolls, and right there, that can't compare to the Lego movie even. The box it Trolls, good, but it wasn't any Lego movie. <laughs> yeah, Box Trolls is bad. It is. <laughs> I didn't think it was bad, but. Well, and I mean, when you compare it, it to their uh, their other two movies, it's bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, it, I haven't seen Coraline yet. Uh, and neither have I, but I do love Paranorman. Yeah, Paranorman's pretty great. B big fan of that. But yeah, it's just, it's weird. Maybe, I don't know, the Lego movie's too loud for these old <laughs> men that vote. Too it's just like, oh, it's, a, it's a bunch of toys. Uh, get, the, get this movie off my lawn. Give it a song nomination. We're good to go. Well, I mean, what are they going to do when they, for everything is awesome, are they going to perform it on a stage? How is that going to work? Are people going to oh, dress God, up I hope shows, so. dancing around? <laughs> Just bring the Lonely <laughs> Island up on stage. And, yeah, uh, yeah. 
just yeah. have them and uh, Tegan and Sarah up on stage yeah. and oh, yeah. perform the shit out of that and just blow them away. You don't think they're going to do the acoustic guitar version that's on the album? That album has like five different cuts of that song. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. Uh, but they, they should bring back uh, Kara Nove from last year. Yes. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was an interesting <laughs> performance. I remember that. <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm one of the few people this did not bother. <laughs> Um, oh, I remember you seeing I read, read what you said about that. You're like, meh, what else? Well, I, the Lego movie I enjoy, but I just thought, I hate movies that beat me over the head with their message, and I felt like that's what it did for an hour and a half. Yeah. Oh, then, I then, you must have, uh, then you must have hated the Babadook. <laughs> oh, yeah. But no, and then plus I saw, like, I love the first How to Train. I, matter of fact, I, I, should, I thought How to Train Your Dragon should have beaten Toy Story 3 the year it, that was nominated. Hmm. Oh, no way. No is, way. <laughs> Toy Story 3 is so beautiful. That is and a then, harsh claim. <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> and, and How to Train Your Dragon 2 I thought was even better this year. And so, I mean, to me, I was like, it's nominated, so that's what should win. You know? uh, that's a series that I do have to watch. I haven't gotten around to the, the dragons yet. Uh, yeah, I have not seen the dragons either. So, Jonathan, convince me why we should give a shit and watch the How You Train Your Dragon cartoons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, if we're talking universal like themes or, or ideas they both have. They just both carry that uh, that very old school kind of adventure feel to them. Mm. Um, mm. And so, is it as jokey as Shrek? No. Oh no. Okay. No, no, no. Oh, thank God. Um, and plus, like they handle, they really handle ideas of like the parent and child relationships in a very mature way. I say mature way in a very like deep way that you wouldn't expect from this kind of film, um, especially the second one. But I mean, it it just like there's the stuff there that kids would enjoy, mm -hmm. you know. Obviously, like you have the, the the dragons, and yeah, there's some kind of cute jokes with them. But the thing that really carries the movie for me are the, the lessons and the ideas and the I say lessons, whatever. The ideas and kind of <laughs> themes that they carry about parents with children, but also like the first one. There's a very strong analogy to like acceptance of different, you know if you want to look at the analogy, people and cultures and things like that. And yeah, so... And, uh, I, mean, I had read an article that in the second one there's actually a, uh, a gay character? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then I'll see it. That's fine. <laughs> it doesn't <laughs> yeah, take much for me to see a movie. But then also, just, they look amazing and they have, like, it's not all action, but when they do do action, <laughs> it's great. Especially the again the second one like I, I didn't get to see the first one in IMAX but I saw the second one in IMAX and holy mm. shit! <laughs> cool. So. Pretty movie, pretty. <laughs> Very. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Well, I think uh, unless anyone else has anything else to say about the Oscars, how about you, Matt? Um. You know, I, there's so few of these movies I've seen this year, but. Uh, like Birdman, I guess, is the one I'm most curious to see. I really liked Michael Keaton's speech at the Golden Globes. Ah, uh, when he started he tearing described. up. Yeah, I'm talking about oh, his son. Yeah. I yeah. thought it was good. I and, uh, I, yeah, me too. And uh, I think he's got a good shot at Best Actor. A bit surprised to see Robert Duvall nominated for The Judge. <laughs> yeah. But, um, <laughs> but, you know, he's been, yeah, but you know he was in Godfather and Godfather Two, and so he's been nominated so yeah. many times. I think he's won at some point, hasn't he? I don't know. Um, he has to have. He's been nominated so many times. Right? I, uh, I think so. And he didn't win for the Apostle, did he? Uh no, no, he did not. Um, I him. It's weird that he's nominated. I mean, I hear the, I haven't seen the Judge, but I hear it's just terrible. Yeah, uh, I'm a bit surprised. I heard that it was just bad. Yeah. Just it was just okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess out of these nominees, out of stuff that I've seen, I'm a bit surprised that The Hobbit, Battle of the Five Armies, wasn't nominated for, like, Best Makeup. Um, I can see that, yeah. <laughs> but, which that movie I thought was okay, but I think it's the best out of those three. I still have not seen it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I mean, 
you know, it's based off of 50 pages of text from that book. Yeah. And it's just it's just uh, Peter Jackson fucking around for uh, half an hour. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs> for, 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 for three hours, sorry. So, um, uh, I just looked it up. Uh, Robert Duvall has won an Oscar before. For uh, he, he won lead actor for something called Tender Mercies. Oh, never, oh I heard of it. I've never heard of. Okay, plays a country singer. So there, there's that. I, I, I think overall, what was it called? Tender, Tender Mercies. Mercies. Oh yeah, I've never heard. Of that. Um, but the list we have here, I, I think it's a bit too safe. There's nothing terribly exciting. There's some upsets, but pretty conservative yeah. choices. Yeah. Um, there's also the whole, uh, <clears throat> what uh, John was talking about, uh, most violent year getting snubbed, the fact that we have to give Meryl Streep a nomination every year. Yeah. Uh, it's in, it's like contractually <laughs> obligated that she get no matter what she does, she gets nominated. And her over Jessica Chastain, it's just like, yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, I even would have given uh, Emily Blunt a nomination for something like Edge of Tomorrow. Have fun with that. Mm -hmm. I mean, she did play yeah. a character called called the Full Metal Bitch, which is the coolest character name <laughs> of the whole year. Well, unless you're Johnny Depp, you're not going to get an Oscar nomination for an action, uh, summer blockbuster action movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know he'll be uh, he'll sweep the Oscars next year with Mordecai. Let's uh, yeah. let's not let's not <laughs> kid ourselves. That that looks like the film of our times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, like, to, to go off on a tangent just a second, do you think Please he's kidding do. himself that he, that he turned down Grand Budapest Hotel? Uh, most definitely. Did Johnny Depp <laughs> turn it down? Yeah, he was supposed to be the Ray Fiennes character. Oh, oh wow. wow. See, then I don't think... But honestly, I don't think if he was in it, I don't think it would have been getting all these accolades. No, no, I don't want to see anyone else as that person but him. You know, no. like Nicolas Cage, Johnny Depp can be a fine actor, but nowadays it seems like you only take roles that make him wear fake teeth and a wig and speak in a British high-pitched British accent while shaking his head a lot. <laughs> You know, movies that make him money. That's all he. That's all he does now. We're well, we're a long, long, we're a long I, way from. I've not seen Tusk. Uh, he been in Tusk? He is. He's in Tusk. Like, oh yeah. yeah, he's in Tusk. Spoilers. Spoilers. That's not really a spoiler. It's on a Wikipedia page. <laughs> um, he's either really funny and like genuinely entertaining, or you'll want to like dry. Drive, drive forks in your eyes and your ears because he's so awful. He he somehow manages to like play the line between the two so so well. Like it's almost a compliment that he can alternate between the two quickly. But that's not a movie that would have made any money. He just wanted to be able to wear prosthetics and speak in a weird voice. Well, yeah, that's kind of his thing. Well, and his daughter has a small. Like cameo in the film, and his daughter yeah. and Kevin Smith's daughter are doing the Yoga Hosers movie. Yeah, um, that's true. He's gonna be in that what? too. When I'm ne nepotism. Yeah, Kevin Smith is doing these all these fucking weird Canadian horror movies. <laughs> and, uh, oh he's one about two teenage girls with superpowers doing something. Um, yeah. Starring I, Kevin Smith's daughter and uh, Johnny Depp's daughter. So it's like nepotism in the movie. It's like Sofia Coppola. I can't. <laughs> 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 I can't. I can't with that man. That Kevin Smith. I can't yeah. with him anymore. Tusk, I can't Tusk should have gotten an Oscar nom for best costume design because it's... Yeah. yeah. I, I haven't seen oh, it, man. Okay. It's, uh, it's something to watch. <laughs> Is it technically a horror movie? No. Well, it's horrifying. It's okay, because like... I mean, he did, he did make Red State, which I was shocked how much I loved Red State. And I thought that was a really good horror movie. Well, Tusk is awful, but I love it to death. I love it with all my heart, but <laughs> okay. it's a horrible, horrible movie. <laughs> all right, I can dig it. So uh, Pixels and Reels approves of Tusk. Uh, you heard it here first. <laughs> but no, I mean, like, I, I, I have a question concerning Oscar nominations, though. Like, were there any, like, ones that you wanted to see nominated even though you knew it was just not going to happen. Like for me, I would have loved to have seen Under the Skin get a score nomination, a cinematography on nomination. Yeah, that's a gorgeous, gorgeous movie. But, oh, yeah. but I knew that I, that's a pipe, that was a big pipe dream. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was I shocked with? 
Uh, Gone Girl, honestly. Not oh, getting yeah. anything. Getting one token mm-hmm. nomination. That I didn't I didn't understand that. That was uh maybe it's too trashy for the Academy. That's what I'm guessing. It, it didn't even get scored, did it? No, all it got was no. uh best actress. Mm. Okay. Oh, and uh Randall Park being snubbed for best supporting actor. <laughs> Well, that was obvious. For, <laughs> um, I had my fingers crossed for months <laughs> that they would be like, "Yeah, he was really good. He was able to swing from like hilarious to like pure mania at the drop of a hat." Uh. <laughs> the actor that clearly should have been nominated for uh, best supporting actor is Kelsey Grammer in The Expendables Three. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I, have, <laughs> I haven't seen that yet. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. He he wears like a. He looks like a grandpa with a big hat, and he just... Oh, he wears, like, the fisherman's hat, right? Uh, he does, yeah. Uh, but to be more serious, uh, I saw a documentary, I guess it's a mockumentary I liked, called Interior Leather Bar, directed by James Franco. Oh, yeah. That, that. came out Wait, last what? year. <laughs> um, I've heard of that, yeah. I've heard of that. He did a... So, okay. Uh, there's a movie in the 80s called Cruising. Mm, I've heard of it. It's William Freakin, right? Freakin, right? The, yeah, that's a, a, a gay murder mystery thing. Um, yes. And Interior Leather Bar, it, so it's a, the original cut was rated X, and they had to cut like 30 minutes out to release the film. And the original film stars Al Pacino, and the, the idea behind the mockumentary yes. is James Franco is going to go, and with the friend of his who's a director of uh, gay porn, um, direct the missing 20 minutes from those from that movie with, using different actors. Um, so I, I guess it's part gay porn, part documentary, but it's they, they talk about interesting things, and then apparently the whole thing was a mockumentary. Frank, was so weird, I love him. Yeah, but I mean, this is <laughs> this is more of a normal movie compared to his other stuff. It's on Netflix, I think. Uh, extremely explicit content. It's unrated that's, for a reason, which I'm, I'm fine. fine. With. Yeah, I figured. Uh, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that would have realistically got nominated, but I thought it was one of the more interesting things I saw. Yeah, I, I heard like I, I've I've heard that's why I said I've heard of it. Um, like I've heard there are parts in the movie where like explicit stuff is being filmed, and Frank goes like right up on it with the mm-hmm. <laughs> camera, with his GoPro. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I definitely have to uh, check this movie out. Is it is it a comedy? Um, th- there's funny stuff in it. Or it's a comedy in quotes. I guess I'd call it documentary, but... Okay. It's like huh. a fake documentary. Whatever you call the Christopher Guest stuff, I guess this is what this is. I don't know. But then some stuff seems sincere. It's so puzzling. I think I think you could write an interesting article on that, maybe. Um, or a post. That, it sounds, could be. that sounds fun. I'll have to, yeah. uh, it's on Netflix, you said? Uh, yeah, it should be on the uh, Instant. Awesome. Yeah, I'll have to add it to the queue. All right, well... <clears throat> Thanks, everyone, for listening uh, to welcome. Pixels and Reels, the uh, debut episode. We'll see if this ever sees the light of day. Um, we're going to just go around the room, and uh, where can you? Uh, where can we find you online, James? Uh, I'm on Twitter, at James Barrett. So James Barrett S, plural. The plural James Barrett. Yeah. All right, all right. Uh, John? Um, Twitter uh, at legendary suit. That's a How I Met Your Mother reference. If you ever have seen that. Show. Okay, all right. I will have to give you a follow. <laughs> For some reason, I'm not following you. And uh, Matt, too. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at sequelcast, and then I I write at battleshipretention.com. Right, uh, are any of you on uh, Letterboxd? Um, I should. Yes, be. I never use it because they never came out with the app, but. It's, yeah, it's coming and, soon. It's coming soon. <laughs> it's been that for the past two years, but yeah. This uh, is true. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, sequel cast on Letterboxd. Any of you other guys on Letterboxd? Uh, yes, you can actually find me online at uh, the Real Matt C. Uh, that's everywhere. That's where I am at. Uh, Twitter, uh, even Xbox, you can find me at the Real Matt C. You can also find me uh, at Letterboxd. Uh, I believe it's uh, Letterboxd slash uh, the Real Matt C. All right. Well, thanks, y'all, for listening. It's been real. Get it, because it's pixels and reels. It's the play on words. It's the worst pun. (laughs) All right, we're done. (laughs)